I want to address this comment. I want to ask anyone that might be in the comment section, might be watching this video. Has there ever been a time when legalism was so bad in your mind with false conceptualizations of God that you wanted to end your own life? If you have gone through something like that, maybe you can say I in the comment section so that people can kind of relate with us who have gone through that. I've gone through that in the past where because of false teachings, I had a bad conceptualization of God that he was always unhappy. He was always frowning at me despite my faith in him. I was led to believe that faith wasn't enough and it had to be about your performance and your obedience, which I could recognize in myself to be catastrophic failure. And the words of Jesus seemed to be contradictory to me when he said, not only did I come to give life, but I came to give it more abundantly. And here it was, I felt like my life was just being zapped, all the joy, all the peace, all the contentment, all the hope. And looking back now, I realize that I was not clear on the gospel in terms of how you're justified and made righteous. I knew that you believed in the Son and you were saved, but then people entered in, and because I didn't know biblical terminology about imputed righteousness, justification by faith alone, at one point when I first believed, I wasn't clarified in all those things, and it caused me a lot of mental suffering, a lot of pain. I remember staying up late at night in my bed, having trouble sleep thinking that for sure I was going to hell. There was just no question about it. And through a course of time, I even wanted to end my own life. But the only thing that kept me from doing that is the certainty of in myself that I was going to hell. And I did not want to then be cast into hell into a worse mental suffering than I was already going through. And so one of the reasons why I do my channel is to help people out of that mental suffering through the clarification of the gospel because Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Now, the truth is a knowledge proposition. And Jesus says, you will know the truth. In other words, you will know a knowledge proposition and this proposition of truth will set you free. You're not set free by works or performance or anything you do. You're set free by the words of God. And so this person left this comment here. He says, I really don't know what to believe at this point. So many people say that you can lose your salvation using scripture. Don't really know what to believe at this point. Just my in my life knowing I'm damned anyways. I'm a lost man. Well, the good news is if you feel like a lost man, Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost. A lot of people in this world do not feel like they're lost. A lot of people with false gospels that perpetuate those false gospels that put people under a lot of mental depression and anxiety have no clue that they're as lost as a golf ball in the weeds. So Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost. And how we are saved, according to scripture, is by grace you have been saved through faith, not of yourself, but as a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We see that the scripture so shows that we've been saved in the past tense. By grace, you have been saved. So we've already been saved through faith. And it's not of ourself. It's a gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. So salvation is not of ourself. It's not of anything that we do. It's not of our works. You can see the only condition by which we are saved is faith. And Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me has everlasting life. Not might have, not could have, not possibly, but has everlasting life. Everlasting life is a life that never stops, it never ceases, it never ends. Notice Jesus says we get this everlasting life when we believe. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me has. So the moment that you believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are a possessor of eternal life. A life that lasts forever and never ceases and it never stops. It was never based on yourself and never based on your works. And Nicholas, you say in this comment, so many people say that you can lose your salvation using scripture. You'll have to post some of those scriptures in the comment thread so I can see what they are, so I can deal with them. There's no scripture in the Bible that teaches a loss of salvation. Now, people will twist and contort the scripture to their own destruction. That is, false teachers who do not believe in Jesus Christ and the promises of eternal life will then take their unbelief and their doubt and then come to scripture and twist those scriptures to try to make people believe what they believe. And that is that you can somehow lose your salvation, that it's not a free gift. 
See, the scripture warns about destructive doctrines, and this is how these doctrines are destructive. They make people lose their peace, their joy, their happiness. They make them not even want to live life. And this man right here might be having some other troubles and things going on in his life besides this issue with his faith. A lot of us have all kinds of side issues and troubles going on in our life. But when people have trouble in this world and then you rob them of the peace that they have with God, they no longer want to live. I remember being in that state. Jesus tells us that in me you'll have peace in the world, you'll have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. See, Jesus is telling us that we can have peace despite the worldly troubling circumstances. But people that want to rob you of your peace with God want to keep you in troubling worldly circumstances, but they want to rob you of your peace with God so that you just have a miserable existence. Despite any and all worldly troubling circumstances, you can still have peace with God. Peace with God, according to scripture, is through the blood of Jesus Christ and the justified, not guilty verdict that we have. If you consider the scripture that says, having reconciled all things to himself, whether things on heaven or things on earth, having made peace through the blood of the cross. So Jesus has made peace through the blood of the cross. Now the blood of the cross is a representation of, which, of what has washed away all of our sins. The blood of the cross has made us holy without blemish and free from accusation. If you consider Colossians chapter 1 verse 22, he reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ's body by his death, that we might be holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. And according to Hebrews chapter 10 verse 14, that's forever. By one offering, he has perfected forever those who are sanctified. So we are perfected in the sight of God forever. He has made us holy without blemish and free from accusation. This is why we have peace through the blood, having reconciled all things to himself, whether things on heaven or things on earth, having made peace through the blood of the cross. We have peace through the knowledge that God's blood has made us holy without blemish and free from accusation forever, that he has perfected us forever through his blood. Now in your comment, Nicholas, you seem to notice that there are people in denial of that. There, there has been, there always will be, and that's just the way it is. There's always going to be opposition to Jesus Christ and what he has accomplished. There will always be people that have gone the way of Cain and will say that the blood of Christ isn't sufficient enough to save you and your faith in him is not sufficient enough to save. And you have a choice like all of us to decide whether or not you want to trust and believe in Jesus Christ and his promises and the word of God or trust in liars and deceivers who do not trust in Jesus Christ but have gone the way of Cain. They're looking to their works. They're looking to their performance. They're, not, they're boasting in their self and their flesh and they're denying the work of the cross. In the denial of the work of the cross that has made us holy without blemish and free from accusation, they don't have any peace, and they don't want you to have any peace either. Our peace comes solely on the basis of the blood of Jesus Christ and the not guilty verdict we have by faith. We don't get peace out of human performance or looking to ourselves, looking to some future version of ourselves what we believe will be acceptable to God. We're acceptable right now in the beloved based on the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's what it means to walk by faith in the Son of God, that I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me in the life I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. So we continue to live by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself up for us. Knowing that when he loved us and gave himself up for us, he made us holy without blemish and free from accusation, and he has perfected us forever in the sight of God. So the peace that we have with God comes on the basis of what he has done for us. He is crushed for our iniquities. He was wounded for our transgressions. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. So it says, by his stripes we are healed. We are holy without blemish and free from accusation. Due to the work of the cross, we have been perfected forever. That's what it means to be healed. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. So the punishment that brought us peace, our peace was bought at a great price. Our peace was bought at the agonizing, excruciating death of Jesus Christ. There's nothing more valuable in all the universe than the life, the death, and the blood of Jesus Christ that was given to us. And this is what saved us. And so there's no other greater price than you can find in the universe that can buy our salvation other than what has already paid for it, which is the blood of Christ. 
In other words, there's nothing of more greater value than the blood of Christ that purchased our redemption. And if that didn't purchase it, nothing else will. Not any amount of works or performance. And to look to those things is ultimately an insulting of the spirit of grace, which is a lot what these false teachers do. They deny the blood and its sufficiency, and they insult the spirit of grace. If the blood of Christ didn't purchase our peace and our salvation with God, nothing else will because everything else in the universe is of lesser value. And so, according to Scripture, we only have peace based on one thing, and that is the work of Jesus Christ and the shedding of blood on his cross and the justified not guilty verdict that we have through faith in him. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. You see the punishment that brought us peace by his stripes we are healed. We are healed from our sins before God. We are holy without blemish and free from accusation. And now we have peace because of that not guilty status consider the scripture in Romans chapter 5 it says therefore having been justified by faith we have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ therefore having been justified by faith which is a non-guilty verdict we have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ see Nicholas that's one of the things you've been robbed from that's why I'm addressing it you've been robbed from peace and one of the ways that you've been robbed from it is you don't believe that you're justified by faith. You don't believe that you have a non-guilty verdict by your faith in Jesus Christ. People have come in and made you believe that you can lose your salvation. It was dependent upon your supposed personal goodness, your works, things that you have to do of yourself. And they are robbing you from your conceptualized not guilty verdict that we have by faith in Jesus Christ. Therefore, having been justified by faith, not guilty verdict. We have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said about that peace, my peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Friend, I can tell that you're troubled and that you're afraid. You want to end your own life here. Please don't do that because you have a life more abundant that Jesus promises. Not only did I come to give life, but I came to give it more abundantly. He came to give you a life by which you are filled with peace through the knowledge of the not guilty verdict that we have on the basis of the blood of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is telling us about that peace that it's not as the world gives does he give to us. The world gives temporal things. Jesus gives eternal things. The gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. So when Jesus gives you his peace, it's an eternal thing. My peace I give to you. My peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. God doesn't want you to be troubled. He doesn't want you to be afraid. He wants you to have a peace, not as the world gives, does he give to you. Now, I've showed you from Scripture what this peace is based on, the blood of Christ, the not guilty verdict, knowing that we're holy without blemish and free from accusation and that we're perfect in the sight of God forever. This will bring us a lot of peace due to the promises of God who cannot lie. And then the scripture says that it's up to us to let the peace of God rule in our hearts. If you consider Colossians chapter 3, it says, Let the peace of God rule in your hearts by which you were called to peace into one body and be thankful. See, because you have been robbed of the peace that you have with God by false teachings, you're not very thankful. You want to die. You don't want to live anymore. I've been there. I know what it's like. When you don't feel like you have any peace with God, it, you can't be thankful. You can't just drum it up and fake it. you got to know a real solid reason why you can have peace. And so God gives us the most solid reason why we could have peace in the universe, and that's based on the blood. There's no other greater thing than we could ever look to than the blood of Christ by which we can know that we have peace because there's nothing of any greater value than his blood. And so the knowledge that the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed the knowledge that we are holy without blemish and free from accusation we've been healed from our sin the word of god admonishes us to let the peace of god rule in our hearts by which we were called to peace into one body and be thankful see where we were all collectively and equally called to the same peace let the peace of God rule in your hearts by which you were called to peace into one body and be thankful. So we were collectively and equally called to the same peace. Notice it says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. It's up to us to let it, to, to the knowledge of what we understand, the scripture tell us about we're, how we're holy without blemish, free from accusation, perfect in the sight of God forever, that he has removed our sins as far as the east is to the west. 
as far as the east is to the west, so far as I removed your transgressions from you. Through the knowledge of all these things, we have peace with God. We let the peace of God rule in our hearts, which is to let it have command, authority, and power in your heart. Let the peace of God be the dominating factor in your heart, because Jesus said, My peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So Jesus is saying that he doesn't want you to be troubled. He doesn't want you to be afraid. He wants you to be in a constant state of peace, not as the world gives does he give to you. The world can provide peace in different avenues, but they're always temporal. They don't last forever. Any peace that's anchored into this world is temporal, along with everything in this world that's temporal. The blood of Jesus Christ is an eternal thing by which we have an eternal peace. My peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So one of the ways I have found, according to Scripture, to let the peace of God rule in my heart is that when it comes to salvation, I remove myself out of the equation. It's not about me. I'm just the sinner that needs to be saved, and I need a Savior. And so I look to Jesus, and by grace I have been saved. Through faith, it's not of myself, it's a gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. If it's not of my works, it's not of myself, I'm out of the equation. I'm just looking to the Savior to save me. And that's, according to the scripture, how you have peace with God. By taking your mind off yourself and focusing on Jesus and what he's accomplished and who he is, he will keep you at perfect peace whose mind has stayed on him because you trust in him. He will keep you at perfect peace if you keep your mind on him and you trust in him, what his blood has accomplished, his promises. Of course, there's a lot of other voices in the world saying you can lose your salvation. You don't have a justified verdict. You don't have peace with God. There's a lot of liars and deceivers in this world, but God does not lie. And the hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before the time began. So God gave promises of eternal life. Those promises are activated simply by believing in Jesus. He that believes in me has eternal life. So based on the promises of God, when we have met the condition to believe on the Son, we have eternal life because God cannot lie. And so, Nicholas, there may be some things that you're confused of about Scripture, and so you maybe haven't got everything understood completely, and so it's causing some doubt. One thing is that you should understand that there is something wrong happening here in the way that either you're believing these other people saying certain things or maybe the way that you've seen scripture so that you're not having peace because Jesus said that he gives us a life more abundant. He gives us peace, not as the world gives, does he give to us. He doesn't want our hearts to be troubled. He doesn't want us to be afraid. The Bible says that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So if those things are happening to you, you feel like you're losing your peace. You don't have a sound mind. You have a spirit of fear. It's because there are misunderstandings to the word of God that are causing that, whether it's from your own study or maybe it's just people, like you said in this comment, just a lot of other voices saying that you can lose your salvation. You need to mark and avoid those people. You need to study the scripture. Look to people who are going to make you edified, grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, and, and seemingly provide those things that he promised, peace, abundant life. A lack of fear because he doesn't want you to be troubled he doesn't want you to be afraid he wants you to know that he loves you there's no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear because fear has to do with punishment and the one who fears has not been made perfect in love the one who's fearing punishment has not been made perfect in love so ask yourself that am i fearing punishment the bible's very clear if you're fearing punishment has not been made you're not been made perfect in the knowledge of god's love and that happens as a result of false teachings people saying that god's Love is on a time limit. God's love only goes so far. If you're caught up in a particular sin, God doesn't love you, and so he's going to punish you. But there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has to do with punishment, and the one who fears has not been made perfect in love. The one who fears has not been made perfect in the knowledge of God's love, that God demonstrates his own love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, and then the dying, he made us holy without blemish and free from accusation. Colossians chapter 1, verse 22. He reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ's body by his death 
that we might be holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. Nick, what you need to understand is that we have been reconciled. That means we have a good relationship. The reason why we are reconciled is because Jesus has made us holy without blemish and free from accusation, and he's done this forever. And so, Nick, I hope this video helps you a little bit. I hope it helps you to have some peace in the knowledge of what Jesus Christ has accomplished, his perfect work, his perfect life. He's all you need. You don't need anything else. You don't need false teachers telling you you're not going to be saved, that you're not going to be justified. It's already happened. According to Scripture, we've already been justified. We've already been saved by faith. And then, according to Scripture, we continue to walk by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. We don't look at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. The eternal promises of God, the eternal life that we have, the eternal righteousness that he has given us, the eternal peace that's not based on worldly circumstances. In me, you'll have peace. In the world, you'll have trouble. But take heart, I've overcome the world. Take heart that he's overcome the world, and if you have faith in him, you're an overcomer. He that is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. The victory that has overcome the world is our faith in Jesus Christ, and in him we are more than overcomers. And that's why Jesus is saying, in me you'll have peace, in the world you'll have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. If you have faith in Jesus Christ, you're more than a conqueror through him that loved you. And that's the same for every one of us, and it's only based on Jesus Christ, his life, his work, and his blood. So God bless you, friend, and I hope your night or day is going good. Peace to you.